I think we are going to start a webinar now. As I was saying earlier, we thank you for joining us for this webinar from all around the world. Once again, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your location. I am Morgan Martin Lorette from Fram Radio International, and I will be your host for this webinar. I want to remind you again and again to choose your interpretation language on the bottom of your Zoom page. You can see an image like a globe. You can click there and choose either French or English. We are going to watch a very interesting video, but before the, to, uh, we launch the video, we are going to listen to the executive director of Farm Radio International, Mr. Kevin Perkins, for a welcome note, and he will share with us a little bit why FRI took on this project. And then as I'm announcing, or as I announced earlier, we are going to watch a very interesting video about the Recover project. Thank you. And over to you, Kevin. Thank you very much, Martine. And uh, welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, delighted to see uh, you in attendance uh, for this webinar. Just going to speak briefly about uh, Farm Radio International, about our work with the Green Innovation Centers, and then just some highlights from from the project that we've just completed uh, with GIZ. So Farm Radio International is a, uh, it's a non-governmental organization and our mission is to make radio a more powerful uh, force for good in rural Africa, one that shares knowledge, amplifies voices and supports positive change. We work with over 1300 radio stations across Africa to help them produce and broadcast more and better radio programs about rural development. We also work in direct partnership with over 200 radio stations in 12 countries to plan, deliver, and evaluate customized radio series designed specifically to achieve measurable development results in the areas of agriculture, nutrition, health, and gender equality. <clears throat> the Green Innovation Centers were commissioned by uh, the Gen uh, German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, they commissioned GIZ in 2014 to develop uh, what, what presently are 15 green innovation centers for the agriculture and food sector in 14 countries of Africa, as well as India and Vietnam. Today, these green innovation centers support smallholder farmers all 21 selected agricultural value chains, including cashew, honey, plantain, rice, baobab, poultry, pigeon pea, and others. The centers support farmers in gaining more benefits from these value chains through the provision of advisory services, educational and training courses with the goal of enabling them to improve uh, the productivity, income, and climate resilience term. Now, when COVID emerged as a global pandemic in 2020, the gains of the grain innovation centers were put at risk due to, among other reasons, constraints on mobility, local travel, in-person gatherings. Could interactive radio help sustain and advance the work of the Green Innovation Centers from a distance? We thought so, and we worked with GIZ to develop an exciting new 18-month project to continue and extend the innovative work of the centers in the seven countries, Ethiopia, Burkina Faso, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Mozambique, Zambia, and Malawi. But we also faced a few challenges. Uh, COVID-related restrictions affected our work with radio partners. Normally, we provide in-person, on-the-job training to our broadcasting partners. We conduct focus group discussions with farmers as part of our formative research process. And we gather stakeholders in workshops to design radio series and identify content priorities. Evaluations normally involve traveling to communities to conduct surveys and field observations, but none of this could be done in the context of COVID. So we need to develop remote-led methods and approaches to all of this work. So it's a great program of innovation for us in support of the Green Innovation Centers and helping them continue to advance their goals. Uh, so we're here to talk about the results, and I don't want to reveal too much in advance of the coming presentations, but quickly, some of what I am most uh, proud of. We partnered with 39 radio stations across the seven countries 
to co-produce and broadcast 1,152 episodes of radio programs about green, green innovations in select value chains. Most episodes also provided critical COVID-19 public health information. So that's 1,152 unique episodes. For context, over 42 seasons, there are a total of 847 episodes of Star Trek produced. So we have performed Star Trek by 300 episodes in about a year. Uh, about 18 million people gained access to information about green innovations and COVID through these programs. And listeners it interacted with the programs through their mobile phones and using our ULISA system for interaction. They interacted about a million times. As many as 87% and at least 20% of survey listeners said, yes, we applied, we started applying a new agricultural practice that we learned about through these radio programs, a practice related to the value chain featured by the Green Innovation Centers. So when you consider the reach and the percentage that adopted had a great impact on continuing the gains and building the gains of the Green Innovation Centers. <clears throat> so let me just thank GIZ for the opportunity. It's been wonderful to work with the team at GIZ and in all the countries and all the Green Innovation Centers. We gained uh, so much experience and knowledge from this and we, and we feel we made a great contribution to your success. And let me thank uh, everyone who's joined us for, for being part of it. I really look forward to uh, the balance of this uh, presentation. Back to you, Martine. Thank you, Kevin. We are going back directly to the video and we shall be shortly back. Zina anga inene sunkoma, ni ma shogera muzi ma shianiga. Ndipo zaga zimeta kadi gulima, ni zaga za zoshiru kila bondi tu. Fua uli miri maurenga uli di nshiro ya tu fenga da mala yuto kabanda uli mande uli stinga. Ndiye tu kuzoto uli miri au kila ujogera moywa tu oso chifiki uyan bira bantu mene. Tina figa ba umuntu ozi mira baroka. Ah, poya mba, tita mvera ba waire sikuti kuli COVID nineteen. Ngati kuno kumuzi. Timaona ngati ndiboza. Chifuwa kuno kwa tu, sidi matako wana po wina alesa mina kudua lai. Ndieno, tinakulu pidira, antu akumarira. Yoti muzi muno, amarira pa awira tatu, a COVID-19. Nipamene na kandi isi mikiso, ya kuti di COVID-19 iliko. Andi asirangiso watu, kuti tikumane nao, zukuma kasa oti futa, nijufuwa ya kaya tuma kukisa nchito kwa mpili kufira wa ilesi. Uh, when COVID-19 showed up uh, in 2019, there was a challenge where farmers were having problems to access extension services. So through the Recover uh, project, we were creating a mechanism in which we could provide extension services to the farming communities using the power of radio uh, accompanied by other ICTs. It happened that our, our media house went into uh, partnership with the Farm Radio Trust. So I was selected to be part of the team, which was to be shooting the programs. Actually, there were 32 in total. Through the pandemic, under the Recover Project, we've managed to disseminate information to our farmers to do with the extension services. So they were able to get extension services through the radio. And also, we created our own feedback session where farmers could ask questions or anything they didn't understand. Shabino, pa miyazi mene eidi, jimene tapi ndurago, ndiku vetela, ndiku puzira, upangiri wa sana sana, kumbali ya ulimi wa magonu, pa wairesi. Kuvela wairesi pa mungu ya Farm Radio Trust, ife sinatita ndisira kwa mpili, pa kutengela kuti alangizi wo, ola kare kutari, tukumata wutenga upangiri, pa wairesi. Ya ulangizi wa kufamu ledo trusti, watipi ntu ya kwa mpili pa kutengela kutila ngiza pa ulimi wa mdandanda moenera. The results have been quite uh, uh, impressive from a couple of exchange that I had with the community radio uh, stations. They really benefited a lot uh, from the programs which were aired because regularly they could meet, uh, listen to radio programs, uh, discuss and see how they can you know, apply that in their daily uh, activities. 
amene sa kutha ku mvera wireless kuyambira panopa ngofunika azikhala bize kwambiri ku mvera wireless ya za ulimi ngati radio kasungu kuti apaise na soba ngiri kapena apese phindu ngati mene kupesa ndanza zaone Thank you uh, to the technical team for this wonderful and impressive video. Yes, we were in Malawi and we are coming back to this webinar. And uh, I'm welcoming here right now, Katrin Lozabanda, the Senior Program Officer for East and South Africa at Farm Radio International. How, Katri Hi, Katrin. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can get you very clear. Thank you. Okay. Um, Catherine, you are going to tell us and tell all the participants on this webinar what are some important details and results about the Recover project that they should know about. Thank you, Martin. Um, I would like to mention a few stuff and uh, firstly is the objectives of the recover project uh, which were firstly to provide and increase the use of high quality and gender responsive interactive radio services increase the knowledge and application of good agricultural practices as well as to improve community awareness and dialogue among women men, community leaders, decision makers on gender equality and inclusion issues affecting women's right to participate in and benefit from the different value chains. We're able to have three um, major approaches that we used. The first one related to impact programming where it was a more deliberate and engage, um, engaging method of working with radio stations. Under that, as Kevin mentioned, we worked with a total of 34 radio stations to produce and air uh, radio programs on different uh, value chains. We also worked um, on one of our more innovative methods called the Script Plus uh, series uh, that engaged our radio partners. We had a total of 134 radio partners who volunteered airtime I'm on the radio station to produce about 10 uh, episodes each uh, relating to climate change, COVID-19, as well as the different value chains that they were tackling in the respective countries. And I would also like to mention the Have Voice on Air approach, which spoke directly to the third objective to increase dialogue uh, on uh, women's issues and their, the issues that affect them to participate participate in different value chains. Just to mention that um, in addition to the different uh, aspects that uh, farmers had mentioned that uh, they had pick, picked up to adopt, one of the key things that we noticed was that first and foremost, in, in as far as the Her Voice On Air approach is concerned, our broadcasters were able to appreciate the method as well as say that they were able through our gender trainings to understand how to better uh, bring uh, women's issues to light and also to ensure that they're included and uh, in the radio program. Another thing that I would like to mention at farmer level was the discussions that were there and the women themselves saying that they were able to have a platform for them to express their needs as well as their views relating to the different value chains. Lastly, I would like to mention regarding to adoption. In three countries, we had over 87 farmers mentioning that they were, uh, they were anticipating to adopt at least one good agricultural practice. So for us, we are very excited about the results that we had, as well as the different uh, approaches that we used that were very innovative and very timely considering the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. We could not realize or get all this result without the funding of GIZ. And on this call, and webinar, we have Christian Chulso-Kosh, Deputy Head of Programs in Steering Unit of Green Innovation Center in Agriculture and Food, uh, food Sector. You are welcome, Christian. Yeah, thank you, Martin. And uh, thanks. 
to the FI, FI team for the invitation. Huh? As we said in Dutch, Eslish Willkommen on this webinar, and uh, we are really glad also to have you here. And we want to know directly what need did you see at time that led you to work with Fundridge International? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, it was, uh, as, as, as Kevin mentioned in his introduction, for us, uh, quite a difficult situation at the beginning of 2020 when we could see uh, the effects uh, and consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic unfolding uh, throughout the globe. Um, and uh, yeah, as a global project, how we call ourselves within GIZ, operating in uh, in uh, now 15 countries, we were of course we we felt the effects of the pandemic uh, in all our countries, and we were wondering, okay, how can we make sure that the impacts that we had generated until that point uh, uh, can be extended despite the pandemic, or at least uh, can can be kept at the level that they were. Yeah? That was like our minimum expectation. So we were sit sitting here in uh, HQ of GIZ and we were brainstorming with colleagues uh, from all our countries uh, what we could do. And we saw that there, despite the challenge, of course, there was also a potential for uh, the better integration of digital tools in our work. Yeah? So we um, compiled a list of different measures to ensure that our messaging, our training content can still reach our target groups, uh, smallholder farmers in rural areas. And um, there were different strategies. So for some training material, we digitalized it and distributed it via an app. We worked mm -hmm. with uh, digital videos that we um, shared via social media. And we um, looked at radio um, uh, and then um, at FRI, because we had an already existing collaboration with Farm Radio International uh, in Nigeria. Yeah. So we contacted yeah. the colleagues there and uh, yeah, uh, just spoke to them about the, 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 the so far positive experience that we had with Farm Radio, especially, uh, of course, regarding the radio, which is still the, um, the sorry, regarding the outreach, which is still the the great benefit of the radio, if you compare it to other tools, um, apps or so, they don't reach as many people as the radio still does in rural areas. That's a great strength, of course. But also, uh, we were quite impressed with um, uh, the, the, the measurable results. Yeah? Like the colleagues mm -hmm. in Nigeria explained to us, okay, the, the baseline and the end line um, uh, character that you integrate into your work to really make sure, okay, what does that contribute to the adoption of certain innovations within our value chain? So we found that very important. And then we entered in discussions with the Farm Radio International team. I was involved at that stage already, so I'm happy to be part not only in this uh, webinar, but have been, uh, uh, that I had accompanied the whole process of the 18 months project. And yeah. um, I think the colleagues of Farm Radio International reacted quite quickly. Uh, and despite some challenges, I think, uh, yeah, the, the time pressure that we had, but also to uh, engage in countries where Farm Radio wasn't active before, as I believe that uh, was quite impressive. And we were very uh, happy to see the results coming out now in the yeah. final results. A, a really groundbreaking project. And Christian, can you tell us how to stay flexible in a crisis situation so as to still get strong results as uh, Catherine uh, showed us uh, during her presentation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the flexibility and adaptability uh, that the, the corporation showed, I think was also an important factor for us because we it was mentioned at the beginning, we work in 21 different value chains. So all of the value chains are different. The countries are different. They have different contexts in which our teams operate. The uh, target groups in our partner countries have different needs uh, depending on the value chain or at the different stage they are in the value chain. So it was really important to have uh, this tailor-made uh, um, target group oriented message, uh, messaging. And I think um, the, um, the, how do you say, the inter- uh, um, the, the involvement of the target groups, of the listeners, that they take active part in the radio shows also was an mm -hmm. element that helped us to stay flexible, to adapt it to the different needs mm -hmm. and the, also the uh, different COVID situations that you had in the different countries. And I think that uh, was part of the successful results that we see now. Okay, thank you so much, Christian. You are still with us until the end of this webinar. 
If you just joined the webinar, we are saying hi, good morning, or good afternoon from your location, depending on your location. Don't hesitate to send an I in the chat to let us know that we are together. And don't also forget to choose your interpretation language to make sure that you follow the webinar in the right language. So if you have been following Farm Radio International for any length of time, you will know that the interactivity is one of our favorite words. And right now I'm going to introduce or I'm going to ask the technical team to launch another great video we realized during this project and it's all about interactivity. Thank you. And I shall be back very soon. Ndiyo ya ndirubeni, ndi ni Fraserina Bejami, tine makore ya kato wanda, ato chilima, manjizirukona, ato shurukundi batila maningi ngoti. Taka aso tere la programa ya Radio Gangwa, nge kuti shwa itipangira, shwa ndiyo shwa taiona, iso soto ipona nasho. Yaka soto uya wapurushetu ya ndozi, ndiyo ya taa kutolini, totorima magwere na ndozi. Ai dai nzira kuyoti, ai tipasa numero. Numero ya oti ditari, ya kugangwa, the police service is a digital interactive platform that is used to interact with farmers during a radio program where farmers can call in and leave their questions and the radio broadcasters can also answer to their questions. I would like to contribute to questions lá íamos verificando aquelas questões que lá os produtores deixavam levávamos os mesmos e lançávamos ao ar enquanto se haver uma pergunta que o, o agricultor tenha deixado lá existia o pessoal do SDAI especialista para poder responder às questões lá e eram deixados com os mesmos os agricultores. Ah, me ajudou muitas coisas, porque eu quando estava a ligar aí, depois de, em, aprendemos muitas coisas. Os semeares fizeram boeiro, um chachar também, como tirar também, como vender. Aprendemos aí no rádio. Costumo estragar, depois quando estragar, estraga a folha. Depois se estragar essas folhas já, não se desenvolve bem já. Tino lima, tica lima, atipisi xango. Tino tola xango li ato siya menemo, ato ita mzere, kuti mfurai kanaya isa kasike kuparara. Levou, quer dizer, acolheu um número muito significativo que nós não esperávamos. A resposta dos ouvintes, quando receberam o programa, foi satisfatória. Olhando, como um programa interativo, um programa que responde às expectativas da comunidade, olhando o distrito em si, é um distrito produtivo, um distrito que a agricultura é a base da sobrevivência de, da maioria. We, we were particularly uh, enthused by uh, the, the, the feedback that the farmers had given. I understood that there were 84,000 reactions to the ULISA system, which is quite impressive for a project which is run for a, for, a, for a couple of months. That indicates that, that people are listening and are interested in, 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 in learning. Radio ya katonaka ngu kutine wa ngawari burutu noto wana wako, kwa wawe gana nzezako. Inini masoko aningasia, ndini Fresterina Bejami, pano pa chisunda, chipinda ume. Kutingatibambe na kulima, no masoko ya sati nubvunzwa, Ngati terere, umwe na umwe acha zona shimwe ni mberiyo. Okay, uh, merci a tous. Thanks to all of you for watching this uh, video. Uh, I'm speaking in French now because uh, the project was implemented not only in uh, English-speaking countries, but also in French-speaking countries, including Mali, Côte d'Ivoire, Togo. So for this morning, 
uh, as uh, you are from, I would ask uh, Mr. Mauli, uh, who is a uh, networking officer in Togo, so he actively uh, participated in the recovery project. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mauli. Uh, so good afternoon from uh, Togo. You worked uh, actively uh, for the implementation of the recovery project. You were the networking officer. So what did you do exactly as part of this project? So uh, my role as a networking officer uh, could be defined as such. So it was two years uh, with uh, the various uh, radio stations throughout the country, but also we were, we needed to uh, maintain the relationship with uh, these radio stations. So did you select the radio station you wanted to work with as part of uh, this project? For the selection of the radio stations, so we did a formative research with FRI in Togo. So FRI uh, designed the tool for this uh, formative research. So the first criteria, so uh, for being able to use the strategic tool used by FRI was to make sure that uh, uh, these radio stations could do a, a very efficient interactive radio. And also the second criteria was to see if the radio station had a production team. And also for the third criteria, we wanted to see how reactive they were uh, to be able to provide great information. And then uh, we wanted also to see uh, how uh, the radio station we will be working with had a good interact, inter internet connection. So how many radio stations have been involved in uh, the recovery project? Uh, globally speaking, for the whole project, we had about uh, 35 uh, stations. So some of these stations were able to broadcast uh, programs uh, for two weeks. And uh, other part of the radio stations uh, uh, broadcasted for 10 weeks on uh, climate changes uh, issues. Thanks a lot, Mauli. We also have uh, Jamari, who is a uh, representative from uh, the radio station, and uh, they took actively part to the recover project with uh, impact programming. So, so these programs were based on resources produced by FRI. So Jean-Marie Camus is the director of one of the radio stations we were involved in the recovery project. Hi, how are you doing? We are doing fine, thank you. So I would like to know how the interactions enabled the radio stations to better serve their listeners. Thanks a lot. During the implementation of the project, uh, the interactions enabled the radio stations uh, to stay in tune with the listeners because they were able to ask questions uh, regarding their concerns uh, some of these concerns raised by the listener were used to address the, uh, some topics in the programs. And also 
some of the listeners were able to share with us their knowledge. And uh, through all these interactions, uh, the listeners were able to receive, to, got, uh, to get uh, timely answers to their questions. So the project enabled us, uh, our station uh, to ensure a fluidness of uh, the information to the listeners so that they can in turn ask their questions quickly and receive answers. So this is what makes them be faithful to our stations. So this is how you are being able uh, to have faithful listeners for your radio station. Because yes, you are right, because we were able to give them answers to their questions quite quickly. So uh, in your case, uh, I think that women were mainly part of the uh, interactivity you have. So how did it happen? And uh, when we know that women have a lot of things to do. So this is what is making our interaction part, uh, very particular. Uh, in the Savannah region, uh, at the beginning, women were not able uh, to intervene a lot, to be involved a lot due to some cultural uh, aspects. And so uh, with the Recover project, we were able to change this uh, uh, trend because uh, women at the beginning of the project know, knew that they could intervene at any time. So, and uh, when they had access to a radio, uh, they were able uh, to listen at any time while doing some cooking or some other cause in the house. And also they were able to get uh, some means to raise their questions to us. So this helped us uh, ensure that uh, gender equality uh, was ensured uh, throughout the broadcasting of our programs. And uh, this is where we have seen that uh, women wanted really to interact the, with the radio programs. And uh, since uh, the calls were free, uh, women, as soon as they had uh, uh, access to phones, for example, they could call quickly. And I will say that a major part of our population lives in under the threshold. So, if you, you are able to give them uh, accessible means, they, you will see how they can interact. And also in turn, when they got the, this information freely, they are able to share it uh, in turn with the other people who have not access uh, to the information we are sharing with uh, them. So I think that uh, uh, the Ulisa Price uh, also uh, boosted our interaction levels because people know that uh, whenever they call, they would have a chance to get uh, this price. All these were incentives uh, to encourage people to interact with the radio stations. So we were ever, even uh, due to stop sometimes the interaction because we were getting many calls. And uh, some others were also asking to get contacts uh, so that they could get, go to these contacts to get more detailed information. Thanks a lot, Jean-Marie. Please stay with us uh, up to the end of the webinar. So, if any one of you has comments or questions, please mention them to in the chat room. And also, uh, please specify to whom you wanted to ask. You want to ask the question. So, at some point, we will be able uh, to address your questions. So, up to the end of uh, the webinar, you will be able to get uh, some answers to your questions.
uh, now we are going to switch to Ethiopia. And I'm receiving here uh, Zelalem Nega, a country representative in Ethiopia. Hi, Zelalem, are you there? Uh, Ethiopia is one of the country where a uh, recover project was put in place. Uh, can you tell us what were some unique parts of implementing the recover project in Ethiopia, Mr. Zelalem? Okay, thank you, uh, Martin. So as you said, uh, uh, Ethiopia is one of the intervention uh, country office for the recovery project. So I can mention few uh, unique, uh, you know, features while we implement the recovery project in Ethiopia. One thing is the uh, selected commodities. So the value chains selected in Ethiopia we are uh, faba bean, wheat, and honey, and. Uh, 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 these are considered as strategic commodities by the government, and especially wheat uh, was also on the table of the government. And even recently, especially the past three years, that was given special attention even to the production level of, of seasons. And uh, the government is targeting uh, import substitution of wheat and Given the scenario, for example, uh, the Ukraine war, the view uh, the wheat value chain uh, globally is disrupted, and the government uh, still give special emphasis for wheat. So we have, uh, I think, put a, a big uh, fingerprint on our outcome on this uh, value chain because the two uh, target regions are the biggest wheat producers. Amhara yeah, and Oromia. So that's one good uh, intervention selection. Apart from the value chain selection, actually, we were also addressing the issue of COVID-19 uh, prevention and awareness and nutrition as cross-cutting issue in this project. And in Ethiopia, um, the final evaluation results indicated that uh, more than 92% of listening uh, farmers responded that their knowledge has increased as a result of our intervention. So this is another good result and feature. Uh, also, Ethiopia, uh, nationally, uh, we have uh, an extension system dominantly by uh, public organs. So the Ethiopian extension system works with a big army of development agents, more than 95,000. So they are based mm. in the smallest uh, government structured Called Kavali, and they usually exercise, you know, face to face communication. So when this project comes in, so this was a very big opportunity because the extension system was highly challenged uh, since face to face communication was uh, really affecting the service of the development agents. So we have uh, really contributed in bridging the gap, especially mm. in the, these two regions and these uh, three commodities of our intervention. Uh, the other unique feature is, you know, if you see the uh, Ethiopian media landscape, it has been maybe a couple of years that the media is opening up. So for 120 million people, uh, we have around 52 radio stations, and many of them are public and big and owned by a regional radio station. And, uh, many of the preference of our farmers tilted towards uh, regional radio stations. So uh, two of the regional radio stations to our intervention were our partner in this project, the Amhara Mass Media and Oromia Broadcast. And in Amhara, um, we are in the two regions and the two biggest radio stations that I mentioned are biggest reach. Look like, for example, in our study, we have seen that uh, we reached potentially 8.7 million uh, population of our community. This is, you know, even beyond the uh, scope of the project reach that's expected uh, for Ethiopia. And that's also actually reflected on the interactivity, like uh, out of the uh, close to 1 million interaction, 50% was registered uh, in Ethiopia. And that indicates that uh, the number of reach has its own implication on the participation level. Even if you consider the unique respondent, 
we have recorded more than 94,000 unique responders. So this is almost a milestone project for Ethiopia uh, out of all. So this is because of our quality implementation and because the extension system was challenged. So people just, uh, you know, uh, got another opportunity. I want, you know, uh, optional opportunity like remote uh, advisory service like interactive radio. And um, yeah. maybe one last unique feature that I can mention is you, in, our, in our system in Ethiopia, we use Uliza uh, as a baby, like the farmers call to the interactive radio system and ask question, participate in polling and receive you know, advisory. So uh, this Uliza system, uh, they pay for that one. It's not free and they are paying. And given you know, the number of interactions, the number of unique callers, it implies that farmers really value our message and they really believe that the message that's broadcast on our partner radio station uh, really helpful and it's on its own you know, um, implication and you know, indication that uh, this uh, you know, contribute to the, sense, the sustainability as a model, as a business model. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Zelale. Uh, uh, what are the most important things to remember when doing programming in a conflict zone? Yeah. Uh, thank you. This is another interesting uh, question. Uh, normally, uh, we do we, in our uh, project exercise risk analysis, but uh, in a situation like where we are in Ethiopia. Uh, where there is armed conflict here and there, and things disrupt now and then. So we really take special attention to critical uh, risk analysis and mitigation, even at the uh, uh, inception level. Uh, even before the project starts, we do formative research. So in our formative research, we are not only identifying radio station at the top, but we rank them and uh, we read some uh, so that farmers get which one is the top one number one and listen to radio station number two number three number four so if something happens because of the conflict with the number one we go to the second kind of thing uh, this is yeah. really demonstrated in the recover project uh, in uh, when there is a conflict in northern ethiopia the Amhara region was highly affected so uh, the one uh, who was working with us, uh, Amara Media uh, Corporation and uh, Jesse Fana couldn't continue after 10 weeks of radio broadcasts. So what we did is, uh, as I said, we have already a, a mitigation plan. So there were number two, number three uh, uh, radio station that were continuing because the two radio station they are public owned and they were instructed to suspend any of the broadcasts because of the current issues and we should focus on this content. So we shifted to uh, optional radio station number two, number three, and uh, to Nota Salam, Deborah Marcos and Deborah Burhan FM station were contacted. They, they have previous uh, partnership and uh, experience working with us. So, uh, and they were also covering the same geographic uh, location where the recover project would like to address. So we didn't miss uh, our uh, uh, customer, uh, farmer, listeners. Uh, we are sure that the program continued even uh, mm. those conflict uh, prone areas. And the other thing that we should be careful is always we do in our uh, project implementation capacity building in station training, uh, planning, design, and broadcast. Uh, many of them used to be a first place. So we should integrate how we can adopt and adapt uh, to a conflict area working remotely, especially the ULISA system really helped us a lot because broadcaster can uh, get access to ULISA, uh, get information, uh, get farmers voice call to the registered user sitting on the uh, radio station, get a voice. Uh, produce a program broadcast. So this has given us a very good lesson and uh, I think it has proved that uh, 
remote approach, especially let alone uh, in the conflict, in the pandemic, even in the humanitarian situation, uh, it has shown that a remote led approach has a big potential you know, to exploit more in the future. Thank you, Zelalem, for your intervention. I think it's very helpful for the organization that are on this webinar, especially those uh, that work in humanitarian settings. A radio is a very great tool, very interesting tool to reach out the target. Dear participants, uh, we have one final video to share with you before we go in lesson length with our speakers. So we are going to fly to Ivory Coast, for this final video and we shall be back soon. Thank you. Je m'appelle Rose, je vis et mon mari, il est cinq enfants. Aujourd'hui là, on va dans le champ de manioc d'abord. On va, on essaie de travailler un peu là. Ça fait au moins 25 ans qu'on commence à faire du champ. Et planter les manioc, banane. À 10 ans encore de plus, j'ai commencé à faire champ de cacao. Au moment où j'ai travaillé au champ, j'ai encouragé les gens de la radio. On, on venait ici, nous ont encouragé à l'association. On a commencé à travailler des fonds. Ils nous ont donné les numéros de la radio. Je suis agent de la radio communale La Voix des Lacs. La fréquence 101.2 et la fréquence qui prône le développement au sein de la commune ici à Yamsoukro. Avec le projet Relance, nous avons été formés par l'équipe de Radio Rurale Internationale Côte d'Ivoire et nous avons mis en pratique en nous approchant des agriculteurs et agricultrices. Le gain est de deux volets. Le premier volet, c'est que nous avons, étant qu'agents de radio, nous avons gagné en formation. Le deuxième volet, c'était de renforcer les capacités de nos producteurs et productrices. Alors, sur le terrain avec les agriculteurs, nous faisons le suivi chaque fois, chaque semaine, pour pouvoir voir leurs besoins et pouvoir aussi donner nos, nos orientations. À la radio, on parlait à faire, de faire les champs du manioc. Le paillage, parce que j'ai nettoyé les herbes pour mettre autour du les, les bois. Sinon, si le, la, la racine sort, les animaux vont bouffer. La radio, c'est lui qui écoute et puis bon, il me dit un peu. Il me dit, ah, aujourd'hui, j'ai écouté la radio, on dit qu'on a qu'à faire comme ça, notre chant va produire. Il dit, d'accord, je le suis aussi. Il a entendu à la radio, il ne faut pas avoir ramassé avec la machette. Et il a dit, d'accord, j'ai compris. Bon, quand je vais, je vais à ma cuvette et je ramasse avec ma main pour mettre dans ma cuvette et puis une charge pour venir mettre à l'état. La radio est, est un format euh, bien connu dans le monde rural, qu'on on sait qu'il fonctionne très bien et qui est très accepté par euh, les producteurs et productrices. Et après euh, les émissions du projet Relance, euh, on sait maintenant qu'il y a 19 000 personnes qui ont interagi avec les programmes de radio euh, de Radio Ferme Internationale et en 70% c'était des femmes. Pour nous, c'était toujours difficile de toucher les femmes dans le monde rural. La radio nous a dit, la radio nous a dit que bon, les femmes peuvent avoir les champs de cacao aussi. Parce qu'il y a des femmes qui sont courageuses, qui peuvent, peuvent avoir. Même à Sima ici, il y a des femmes qui ont chant de cacao aussi. Je, je remercie la radio. Parce que quand mon mari écoute la radio, en tout cas, quand on suit la radio aussi, le travail que moi et mon mari ont fait là, en tout cas, ça, ça s'avance. C'est très bon, ça s'avance. Je vois aussi que c'est bon aussi. Donc je remercie la radio. Merci. Thanks to the technical team for these nice videos from Ivory Coast. So we are going straight to Mali. And I would like to invite uh, Malamin Traoré, who is our country representative in Mali. Hi, Martin. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. I would like to remind of all of you 
to raise your questions in the chat room so that we can, uh, when we got to the question session, answers to your questions. So this way you will be able to get an answers. So Malamin, Malamin, you were one of the country who, in which uh, the recovery project were, was implemented. Am I right? Yes. What, what are the lessons learned throughout this uh, uh, project? Uh, thanks, uh, Martin. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for putting me at ease. In Mali, I would like to remind you that uh, in some uh, villages, we have uh, some regions uh, from what we can retain from uh, the project. So for the radio programs, uh, broadcasts, uh, there were some times uh, that we needed to make sure that uh, listeners could uh, uh, participate uh, very efficient, efficiently. So uh, at FRI, we want to make sure that listeners are part of uh, decision making. So we already know sometimes that uh, we have a specific radio stations we would like to work with because they are aware of uh, the seasons and periods uh, where the listeners need uh, very good information. So based on the policies we have uh, in the country, we have means uh, to make sure that uh, we can apply all we are we want to use and uh, provide with uh, people. So another lesson I would like uh, to share with you is that uh, we need to involve stakeholders uh, uh, based on the value chain and the producers. We need to involve all these stakeholders in uh, the uh, interactive radio programs designed. And this combined with other types of uh, trainings. And uh, I think this will uh, uh, foster the development of resources uh, and uh, for the radio broadcast. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, now I will go to Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Please, uh, can you give us some lesson learned from uh, Recover Project? at the level of East and Southern Africa in general. All right, thank you so much, Martin. Uh, one of the major lessons that I would like to share is how radio is um, one of the credible solutions if we are to operate at scale. We did the recover project uh, because of the COVID-19 restrictions and uh, radio has indeed provided to Provide, proven to be a, a good extension tool. So, um, which is more. Uh, I think we have some uh, in connection problem with uh, Katrin. Uh, maybe we are going to take why Catherine is trying to connect again, Zelalem or Christian. Let's let take Christian. Uh, uh, Catherine, you hold on a few minutes. Let's take Christian Chulse as our founder. What was one of the lessons learned from this project? Thank you. I, I think for us, um, one of the main lessons was just to see again the impact that radio can have. We are in a lot of discussion on uh, digitalization, digitalization of our project activities and to use more digital tools. Uh, and some work better than others when you consider our target groups in uh, like uh, rural areas, smallholder farmers, and uh, the impact um, that uh, we saw through this project, uh, I think, 
yeah just showed again uh, the the strength the the radio has which is sometimes overlooked when you discuss new modes of digital implementation eh? and we are making this case uh, a, a lot that um, we are looking for digital tools that have not too high entry barriers and uh, uh, consider the digital divide that already exists in in the areas where we work and i think uh, that uh, argument uh, again got strengthened a lot when we now see the results coming out of the recover projects and we are going to take that um, up further internally and we also plan uh, an internal session where we share the lessons from the projects within giz uh, because i think uh, yes also other projects working in the agricultural sector especially within giz can learn from this experience okay, we thank you so much christian uh, katrin are you back with us Um, yes, I am, but allow me to keep my video off. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So we were, uh, you, were talk, you were talking about lesson learned from the project. Okay, uh, all right, sorry. So I was saying that when you look at uh, taking technologies to scale um, in the context of um, extension and as well as uh, in the context of COVID-19, radio is definitely a solution to, to consider um, because mm. if you look at the context of the Recover project, uh, it was on the basis of the COVID-19 restrictions and yeah. uh, from the different uh, quarters that I've shared, I think we've been able to see that indeed uh, the radio can be able to generate uh, the numbers that we are looking for in as far as um, making sure that a wider number of uh, smallholder farmers are able to access information uh, pertaining to specific technologies. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Maybe uh, Zelalem, do you have a lesson learned from this project? You may want to share with uh, all the participants from Ethiopia. Yeah, uh, one good lesson is uh, our adaptive method really works uh, and it can really scale up. The uh, ICT enabled uh, interactive radio uh, mm. by nature radio really works especially at scale. So uh, when you want to do things like awareness for mm. millions of farmers category. I think the ICT enabled approach is the best approach. And digitization is actually the way forward, even in Ethiopia. The government mm. is drafting a roadmap and a digital extension system uh, combining with radio uh, is already uh, believed by the government and to integrate as an extension system. And uh, the other lesson that I can take is uh, we have seen results, especially to uh, impact level and to adoption level. But for this adoption to really uh, be uh, meaningful, uh, radio programs should not be short lived. Like message should be bombarded in uh, not only in one uh, production cycle, but in two, three production cycles. And it gives an opportunity for those farmers who missed last year and who uh, really got convinced to adopt a certain technology, they need time and, and uh, you know, to decide on their production and adoption uh, behavior. So uh, maybe the one year was one short period for this project, but it's good that the more years the campaign goes, the more impact is one lesson that I can. Maybe Mauli would like to share one lesson learned from this project. Uh, in Togo, uh, I would like to mention two lessons we learned. Uh, I should say, first of all, that uh, radio resources are, are a very good tool. Uh, so we could, should keep uh, sharing with the uh, radio stations uh, because this is a significant source of information for the design and the production of the programs. And the second lessons we can learn from this uh, recovery is the use of uh, ULISA. Uh, 
So this tool allows uh, the radio station to get feedback from the listeners. I think these are the two lessons we can uh, keep uh, uh, from what we have been implementing uh, in Togo. Thank you. Merci. Okay. Uh, merci. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, merci, now, Mauli. Uh, now we are in the Q&A session. Uh, we already have a lot of questions coming from you. And if you still have questions uh, to address to our speakers, just drop them in the chat and the Q&A box and it shall be my pleasure to voice out your question. We have one question here for Catherine from Ida Pitcher. Uh, she said, I think it's often to be the case that women access to radio set is less than that of men. How have your project addressed this or have you, a, uh, or have you any advice on this? Did any of your project purchase radio set uh, example for women's group, uh, Katrin, we have one question for you. Thank you so much, Martin. Um, indeed, uh, the observation is correct that uh, normally women would have less access to radio sets uh, than men. And uh, our projects do uh, address this issue, uh, firstly, by purchasing uh, radio sets and distributing to community listener groups uh, with a special uh, focus on women. We also uh, train uh, women uh, for them to be able to use um, mm. these uh, technologies because the issue might on, not only be the issue of access, but also the ability to use. So we are able to also under the Have Voice On Air approach, train women to use um, the tools and for them to voice uh, their opinions opinions and their needs um, through uh, designated uh, Uliza polls, um, as well as um, radio segments, we're able to do that as well. Uh, just to mention that under the Recover project, while we did purchase radio sets and uh, we distributed them, one of the key hindrances was the lockdowns because it meant mm. people could not meet. Um, so that was one of the key issues that we faced. However, um, once the restrictions were lifted, uh, most of the groups were able to reconvene and to start to more functionally uh, use the radio sets. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I, I think I have another question, but this time for Kevin Perkins, the executive director of Farm Radio International. Uh, one participant want to know what is Farm Radio Trust and how does it, its programming relate to Farm Radio International? Thank you, that's a very good question. Uh, Farm Radio Trust and Farm Radio International are like uh, sister organizations. The uh, uh, Farm Radio International opened an office uh, in Malawi in 2007 to implement a project there. Uh, and then as the project unfolded, the advisory board for the project said, Malawi really needs uh, an organization like this, a national farm radio organization. So with our uh, support, uh, Farm Radio Advisory Board made Farm Radio Trust a, a national uh, NGO, and we have a strategic partnership agreement with them. Uh, we do uh, collaborate on many programs. Uh, farm Radio Trust also has its own uh, independent initiatives, but very much mm. compatible mission and goals and approach. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Ke uh, Kevin. I have another uh, question here. Uh, it was a question asked in French and it's coming from Abalo Jeremy Kadanga. We want to know if we are going to put in place again, the recover project. I think I will address this question directly to Christian Schulz from GIZ. Are we going to have recover project again? <laughs> this is yeah. a good question. Um, uh, for, I mean, the, the, special, uh, the special thing about the Recover project uh, was that it was a response to a crisis and that we then here in HQ um, um, had a budget for that kind of crisis through BMJ to, to react centrally. 
which made, of course, uh, administrative things within GIZ also easier if, uh, if you have larger contracts that are handled by the steering unit of the Green Innovation Centers in Germany. But that's not the normal mode of our implementation. Normally, the 15 countries have an independent budget and have uh, independent responsibilities uh, to implement uh, their project. And then we just aggregate basically the results that, uh, that get implemented and to show an impact at the global level. So for now, we are not in a position to um, have a project of that size uh, yeah. again uh, designed in the same way. But uh, having said that, I know from several of the um, countries that were involved under the Recover project that their experience uh, um, of the collaboration with Farm Radio and the local radio stations was very positive. And they are looking into their budget and thinking if they might prolong uh, certain corporations on certain aspects or on certain value chains with their own budget in the near future. But I am not in a position to, um, uh, to speak more concretely about that because that is uh, within the responsibilities of our heads of projects in the countries. But um, yeah, maybe um, something more will, will come out of that and uh, cooperation can be prolonged in some of the countries. Okay, maybe I'm going to ask another question directly to Kevin uh, to know if uh, Farm Radio International have plan re uh, related to recover project at country level, since Christian said now it was a global response to the crisis related to COVID-19 at that time for 2021. Do Farm Radio International already have some discussion with uh, GIZ offices at country level? Yes, there have been discussions at, at country level, and you know, I, I think we see uh, our, our interest in the success of the Green Innovation Centers remains, and we're available to uh, support uh, through ongoing uh, communication efforts using interactive radio. And I think there are quite advanced discussions in, in several countries, but the communications continue, continue to see uh, the Green Innovation Centers as partners of our work in those countries. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Kevin. I have another question for Christian Schulz. Uh, a participant is asking and want to know for any NGOs listening, how can they leave a good impression on funders so that the funders want to work with them again to extend uh, or uh, want to extend an engagement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the interest uh, and uh, interest in reaching out to us. Um, also there, I, I would advise to contact the colleagues uh, on the ground in, in the different countries, uh, depending where you work in. I mean, we are only active as green innovation centers in these 15 countries. But if you are an, uh, an actor active in uh, value chain promotion, value chain development in uh, the agricultural field, um, feel free to reach out to those colleagues and to uh, get in touch with them and discuss potential synergies. I'm happy to share contact information. Um, if people are interested, maybe uh, this can be sent out at a later stage or so. If that is, if that is of interest, I'm be, I'd be happy to do so. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think uh, we still have some questions uh, from countries some questions that are coming, maybe uh, Maoli at the level of Togo, how do we, uh, how do you do, or how do a radio station do to be part of the network uh, of Farm Radio International? Maybe Martin, before that, can, can I say something, please? Sorry? Yeah, this is Zalalem from. Okay, Zalalem. And uh, sorry, so I just want to say a few things, uh, just to supplement Christian, and also to share our experience regarding, you know, uh, Recover2. And for example, uh, as Christian said, it all depends on the uh, things on the ground and our partnership with country team, the JIC team is working with the Farm Radio International Ethiopia office. And uh, next week, uh, uh, on Tuesday, we are planned uh, 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 webinar uh, uh, at the country level, not only with GIC team members, but other uh, GIZ project 
partners because uh, we want to share what we have experienced in the in this recovery with GIC with other partners in GIZ so that that can be replicated even if there is a chance uh, as Christian said to continue with different value chain or to continue with the same value chain so this result sharing kind of forum is very important uh, in other countries uh, also uh, this is what I would like to reflect on thank you Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Zelale. Uh, now we can go back to Mauli. Oui, bien sûr. Merci beaucoup. Alors, au niveau... Thanks a lot. Uh, in Togo, uh, we can mention three elements. In terms of uh, networking activities, uh, we kept contacts with about 40 radio stations and daily we make sure that we share uh, radio resources with all these radio stations and also we try to involve in the production of the radio shows so we are trying to see how we can better support them in the program uh, productions. And uh, the recovery project was an opportunity for us to improve our collaboration with uh, the radio stations. So also uh, what we can notice is that regarding the gender equality aspect, so through the Recover project, we noticed that uh, for the first time, uh, female farmers felt they were really involved in a project. And this due to the use of the radio stations, which were inviting them to interact with the radio programs. The last point, I would like to mention is uh, about uh, the capacity building of the radio stations. This is really important for us to keep training uh, the radio stations, but this will should be based on the needs they raise when we have discussions with them. So, for example, if uh, we have a training which is lasting five days. This will help them uh, raise all their concerns and issues regarding the kind of needs for which they will like to have our support. And uh, also we can work more on improving our at the distance uh, tools we are using for the training we are providing to the radio stations. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mauli. I just want to remind everyone in the webinar that uh, you can ask your question. Don't hesitate to send your question in the Q&A box or in the chat box, and it will be my pleasure to voice it out and to share your questions with the speakers. I have another question for Catherine. Uh, one participant wants to know what goes into executing a project of the size of Recover. And we, you, we know that you are the senior program officer for East and Southern Africa. What goes into executing a project of the size of Recover project? Um, that's um, uh, quite a, a loaded question, um, but just to mention that um, I think what the key things that normally uh, we consider when we are coming up with our budgets and we are setting up, um, firstly, uh, is the human resource, uh, because you would agree with me across those different countries would need uh, teams to be able to implement uh, those things. So we have staff time, uh, both in country and also globally, because um, we have our 
our uh, global teams that are responsible for training and for uh, providing technical backstopping uh, to the uh, country teams. Um, another thing that I would also want to mention is training. Uh, one of the key things that we are increasingly um, aware of is the fact that uh, for us to be able to well implement our radio activities, our interactivity, it means the radio station needs to be trained and to be able to ensure that they are trained um, adequately and understand um, that also takes uh, beyond just meeting them once to constantly coaching them. So we we'll need to factor the monetary um, aspects of training as well as the, the time um, that it would take uh, to be able to, to train uh, these teams. Um, another thing I think that is uh, very critical is also being able to um, have a team that um, would be able in country to partner uh, with different uh, uh, stakeholders as well as to identify key radio stations that we could be work with and that takes research so you would see that uh, for us to be able to cost that um, is also um, uh, quite hefty on its own for us to get things right we need to know what the status is um, on the ground and it means we need to have research in each country um, better yet not only in the country but to sample uh, areas that we would like to to visit so that we are able to collect data on which radio stations they listen to um, and uh, what a view. So I'll mention those key uh, three key things as um, things that perhaps uh, would put um, the mind in perspective as to what it takes to be able to lift off um, activities uh, such as recover, not to uh, belabor the point and also uh, being mindful of time. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, merci beaucoup, uh, Catherine. Thanks a lot, Catherine. I have a question for Malamine. Uh, Aaron is asking uh, which are the risks you anticipated as part of the recover project. Thanks a lot, Martin. This is a quite interesting uh, question. I would like to share the experience of uh, Mali. When the project was incepted, we were faced with a social and political uh, situation. We had a security issue throughout the country, but uh, despite this uh, situation, uh, we were able to get uh, uh, relevant uh, deliverable. Uh, first of all, uh, we did an assessment of the assets we already had with FRI uh, to make sure we can uh, build on these assets uh, to face the, the challenges we were going to meet. So it's uh, through all these environment that we were able to define some uh, issues on which we are we're going to provide results. So uh, regarding the decision-making uh, aspect, we wanted to make sure that the programs we will be proposing really responds to the needs and uh, concerns of the population. So first of all, we had to go in the field and uh, uh, ask for the needs of uh, people so that we can take them into account in the programs and resources we will be providing. So it's after uh, the success of the first phase of uh, uh, the project in Mali that uh, we were able to think about a second phase we could implement uh, in Mali. Thank you. Thanks, Malamin, for your answers. I don't know if we still have uh, some questions in the chat room. 
maybe Tara, uh, you have many people who are asking about the way we can have partnerships. Uh, do we have uh, the means to provide, uh, for example, uh, contacts? So maybe you can uh, send us an email so that we can provide you with some information. Thank you. Tara, are you there? Yes, hi, Martin. So uh, for anyone who's interested in following up with us further, I would say, you know, we're reaching the end of our time limit, so we may not have more chances to answer your questions today. But for those of you who have uh, final questions for us or would like to follow up with us after the fact, there's a few ways that you can reach out to us. The first is simply by emailing our info at farmradio.org account. Uh, and we'll be able to direct that to whoever is um, best to answer your questions. And the second way is if you are looking to partner or find out more information about partnering with us, you can email us at partnerships at farmradio.org as well. And through those two ways, uh, I think you'll be able to follow up with us and we'll be able to get back to you with any answers to any questions you might have. Okay, thank you so much, Tara. Uh, we are taking Christian Schulz. Uh, do you have any final talk, Christian? We still have two minutes to the end of this uh, webinar. Yeah, thank, thanks um, once more for the invitation and for the good collaboration over the last one and a half years. Um, we will have a reflection also with BMZ uh, after the summer break here in Germany, uh, um, solemnly for the cor Corona response measures that we took up within our project. And we will do a yeah, critical reflection on things that worked and uh, didn't work. So uh, a lessons learned uh, exchange. And we will definitely also highlight um, the, the farm radio corporation here as a good example. And we, as I said, plan and GIZ internal session where um, my colleague Raphael is already in touch with the FRI team uh, to also share the results of the Recover project uh, within GIZ. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, um, just hope that uh, the discussions at country level will be fruitful and that uh, the collaboration uh, may continue on that level. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Christian. Some people are asking the link of the videos. Yes, I think the team will share with you the link of the videos. I know that many of you appreciated the videos you can share uh, in your network uh, about the work that was done in this country. And I'm going to take now uh, the executive director of Farm Radio International, Mr. Kevin Perkins for his final words before I wrap up. Thank you, Martine. Um, it's been wonderful to uh, participate and listen and reflect uh, and share with, with uh, others, other stakeholders and partners on this important initiative. It, 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 it was a big program uh, over a, a short period of time that addressed a really critical need and uh, a lot of lessons were learned, a lot of new innovations were, were tested and, and, and good results from that. So very happy you could be part of this reflection and learning with us and, and welcome uh, any further comments or questions you may have following this. Uh, let me thank all of our panelists uh, for their participation and preparation for this. Uh, thank you, Martin, for an excellent job of uh, of, of hosting this event. And thank you to Sarah uh, for your excellent translation as usual. Um, I'll, I just, uh, again, thank you for your participation and, and wish you all the best for the remainder of the day. Thank you. Thank you everyone for attending. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. We are going to send you a survey to help us make our future webinar better. So we want to 
thank uh, especially our uh, partner, founding partner, GIZ for supporting this project. I cannot forget all the team work uh, during this project, the team from Mozambique, Malawi, Ethiopia, Zambia, Togo, Mali. Merci, merci encore. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, we hope to catch up with you soon, maybe for another webinar for uh, another groundbreaking project of Farm Radio International. Good afternoon to all. Good morning to all, depending on your location. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Merci. Thank you. Au revoir. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Au revoir.